McGee, and we will go straight to questions, so uh, go ahead and raise your hands, and we'll get one of the floor mics to you, and we'll go ahead and begin. Hands up. No questions, huh? <laughs> All right. Yeah, give you the real easy, broad question here. Obviously, you know, it's kind of a turnover in, in, in the backfield. Can you talk about how the, the veteran re returning are looking and versus uh, how the young, late arriving young guys are looking? Yeah, we'll start with Kenny McIntosh, a senior who uh, had a really, really nice spring. He showed a lot of leadership in the, this summer's work program, and he's doing a great job of mentoring the two young guys that have just come in, Branson Robinson and Andrew Paul. Uh, Kendall Milton Jr., who uh, has suffered some injuries each year that he's been here. He's been very healthy this uh, spring, and he's also uh, been healthy this summer. So we're looking for big things out of him, and he also serves in the leadership role because he had the opportunity to get led by James and Zamir, uh, four-year guys, along with Kenny. So with those two guys, along with Dejon Edwards, who's been a consummate uh, student athlete, when you say very unselfish, a team player, uh, knows his role, fits. He's going to be counted on as well uh, this year because he has value to our football team. Yeah, you touched on the injuries that Kendall has had. How do you think that has impacted his development? And now that he is seemingly healthy, how has he sort of looked so far in fall camp? Uh, he's looked great during fall camp. Uh, the development piece, he, you know, you lose reps when you're not on the football field, but the way we structure practice and have walkthroughs, he's getting those uh, mental reps that, that are well needed against various looks. So from that perspective, he, he's still inclined to uh, be, a, be a good performer on, on Saturday nights and Saturday afternoons. Hey coach, um, Andrew Paul from the outside looking in looked like a last minute addition to this, this past recruiting class uh, and definitely wasn't uh, in the media side of things as touted as a Branson Robinson. Just wanted to know what you saw in him and what, what he brings to the table. Uh, comes from a good high school program. They won a state championship. Uh, he was six foot, 220 pounds, so he has great size, has good speed. He's a great kid, has a great family. Um, uh, very, very quiet, hard worker, so he fits all the character uh, things that we're looking for in our football players. Uh, and we also uh, needed another running back. Uh, we always like to keep five on our roster. Uh, our allotted number is six, uh, but we've been kind of short of that number because of the, uh, the talent that we've had in the room. But he's uh, just getting here. He, he wasn't a mid-year, so he's kind of behind from a mental standpoint. We'll get a chance to evaluate him further in the scrimmage on Saturday, which uh, I know all our guys will be looking forward to that. Thank you. Yeah, Coach, following up on, on Paul getting in on a guy late like that, and I think Clemson was in the battle. It's a pretty good school. How does Georgia come into the scene that late and have the pull to get a guy like that that's, even though his star rating may not have been as high, was, was pretty sought after by championship programs? Well, he has family from Georgia. Uh, so there was a connection there, uh, and the running back tradition here speaks for itself. Uh, that tradition was uh, developed way before I got here, and uh, just getting in there the month of uh, the late month of December and the whole month of January, uh, it led the opportunity of me getting to know him, getting to know his family, him getting to know me, and just what he wanted, goals and aspirations uh, fit coming to Georgia. Coach McGee, uh, two questions. One, have you ever had a lot of running backs from Bill like Branson Robinson? He seems to be a little bit different. And yeah. second, can you tell us about some of the other guys on the team that you helped recruit? Everyone knows you as the running backs coach, but you're, there are a lot of guys on this team that I don't, I don't know if you were the primary recruiter, but you were definitely in it. Can you give some of those names? Uh, Branson, the way he's built, he's built like a, a brick house, uh, doesn't have a, a neck. Just referring back to one of my uh, teammates, Takeo Spikes. He's very similar from the shoulders up, uh, built like Takeo Spikes. Uh, I mean, Nick Chubb was a, a good looking uh, student athlete as well. But uh, Branson's more than just muscle. He's, uh, he's very dedicated. He works hard, obviously, in the weight room and, and strength the conditioning. But uh, he's, a, he's a sharp young man and he's going to be relied upon uh, this year. Uh, with the second question, uh, as a staff, we have to go out and help 
recruit other positions. Uh, when I'm signing only one or two running backs, and uh, I got a great relationship and rapport with high school coaches. I feel like I can talk to any parent, uh, any mix, any race, each, any social economic status. I try to fit in where I can to help get the best players here. And just being a you know, one of the longest tenured coaches here, that's just part of what Coach Smart wants and you know whatever he wants from me, I'm going to definitely do it. I think from the public standpoint, Dejon Edwards is maybe the least talked about running back in this room. What what can you tell people that they don't know about him? What does he bring to the table? Uh, what they're going to see in a, in a few weeks here? Uh, he's, he's really quiet. Uh, he's, he's not going to be a, a boastful guy. He doesn't talk a whole lot. But what you're going to get is what you see on the Saturdays that you've seen. He's very unselfish. He, he closed out a lot of games. He wasn't a guy that was pouting because he didn't get in uh, earlier in the game. He uh, adds value and has a role on special teams. And that's a very, very important component of our success on the football field. Uh, he, he's going to be a competitor, and he's having a great uh, camp thus far. And he had a great spring, too. So expecting great things out of Dejon. And he, you know, he's graduated into a role where he's going to get snaps. Dale, uh, when Glenn came up and, and talked to us a few days ago, I mean, we talked about how long he's been here now. You two obviously were on that first staff. Just how much have things changed for you around the program from going way back then to, to where things stand now? First off, we don't have to take that 15-minute uh, bus ride to the solar panels. <laughs> uh, so that was a definite comfort. Uh, the only thing we lost in that was a little connection piece. You got a chance to talk to your players before and after practice on those bus rides. but. You know, the facility speaks for itself. Uh, it's the best facility in the country. Uh, our kids are, are well deserving and uh, they're treated very, very well. And it adds to uh, our practice efficiency on a day to day basis. Other than the fact of our fields not being side by side, I think that's the, probably the only drawback that we have right now the distance that you have to travel from uh, one field to another. And uh, as much as we practice two spots. Uh, it, it will add yards, unwanted yards that's not needed, and it can cut efficiency of practice at times. Dylan, uh, kind of both the coordinator part of your title. The, how have you seen this offense evolve and adapt with Todd bringing his principles in, kind of modernizing, quote unquote, but without getting the running part of it, what kind of made Georgia great? Uh, first, and it goes back to recruiting. Uh, we recruited very, very well on the offensive line, so everything starts up front. Uh, going to Coach Munkin, he's a very, very smart, detailed, uh, consistent coach. He's uh, going to demand a lot from the coaches and also demands a lot out of the players. Uh, I think he does a great job of uh, identifying the personnel, what fits certain plays, uh, trying to use the dynamics of each individual player to maximize their abilities on, on Saturdays. Uh, I would say his NFL system fits us. He didn't come in and try to change every single thing. Uh, and he's also open to ideas. Uh, that's one thing that gives us a lot of input. And when you talk about adding Mike Bobo, a 20-year-plus coordinator, uh, Buster Faulkner, who's a 11-plus coordinator, Brian Clinton, who's been an offensive coordinator as well, you have a lot of uh, knowledge and experience, and he, he leans on that, too. And I think it's a, a real joy to, to work with Coach Mike, and I've learned a lot from him. Like I say, he's very particular in the details of small things and little things, and he holds everyone accountable. Yeah, Dale, this applies to running backs, but I guess receivers, too. How do you all go about the decisions to um, rotate guys within a game? Is there a set plan going into it? Is it in the moment you who has the hot hand, who needs a, who needs a break. Like how, what are uh, those decisions look like in terms of rotating guys in and out? Well, the decisions are made during practice, so you got to show that you understand the details of the assignment, and then you got to execute whatever play is called during practice. And I think through practice, and you build days up and you stack days, you build confidence in the coaches, and uh, you try to find roles for those guys. So everything that we uh, do and make decisions about all – come from how you do in practice and execute those assignments. Uh, Coach Truman the other day said that you guys as coaches are spending more time 
here with the players and the other coaches than you are your own families. Uh, he hated to admit that. But I wanted to know what that sacrifice has been like for you when you encompass your job of total coaching, planning, recruiting. Can you just tell us a little bit more about what that sacrifice is? Uh, got, if you're married, you got to have a, a strong wife at home to kind of choreograph the, uh, the day of the kids and uh, bills. I don't, I don't even know what's in my checking account. I don't, I don't do nothing uh, in regards to house note insurance. Uh, so I think having a great leader at home is big and then just stressing to your kids uh, that this is a sacrifice. And you know, it's tough at times, but Coach Smart does a great job of allowing us to uh, get back home and, and spend time with our families. Uh, you know, the biggest time uh, consumptions are, you know, right now while we're in camp, but once you get into the season, you get a in kind of a routine and, you know, from Saturday after the game all the way to Wednesday, you're going to grind. And we get an opportunity to go straight home after practice on Wednesday. So we kind of have our day uh, Wednesday as a family and Thursday is, is the same. Sometimes it's not the case for myself or uh, non-coordinators because on Thursday, sometimes we have to get in place to recruit and watch a uh, prospect play on Friday night. Uh, so, But it's, it's part of the job and I, I love the job that we have. And, is us giving back. So, uh, just a decade ago was your last season at Carver, right? Okay, yeah, that's right. So, just kind of talk about just your journey 10 years now, now you're in your sixth, seventh year uh, as a run game coordinator here at Georgia. Just kind of talk about your journey to, to this point over the last decade. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't change a thing about it. Uh, being a high school coach uh, really, really taught me a lot how to talk and communicate with the kids. Uh, I constantly had parents uh, that were, weren't involved, that I had to try to get involved. Uh, we definitely had a very, very low socioeconomic status of kids when I was at Carver. Uh, so resources weren't necessarily there. So just being connected to my players, communicating with my players and parents, uh, just getting the, saying the right things at the right time really, really mattered. and. And at the end of the day, it's, it's about people, how you treat people, the relationships that you develop and have uh, with your with your players and parents. And I still have continued relationships with guys I've coached in high school, as well as here at Georgia. Uh, I think that's just important. Uh, you're getting more than a coach when you when you get me. You're getting someone that's going to be what I call part of your lifeline forever. Uh, you know, I get invited to weddings and. My uh, ex-players tell me when they're having kids and things that they're going through or they ask for advice in the profession or even outside the profession. So uh, as a coach, you wear a lot of different hats. And, and being a high school coach, the only thing I do now is cut grass and line the field and fertilize grass. So those are things that have kind of stopped. But uh, just the, being around people I love. I've been part of a locker room since I was basically 10 years old. So just being part of that team component uh, that camaraderie, uh, celebrating after wins in the locker room, you know, that's just just the best part of my job. Coach, you um, mentioned Kenny McIntosh. Coach Monkin talked a lot about Kenny's versatility earlier. and uh, He was another guy, I guess you got in late, had to beat Oklahoma for hand play. You moved to Gilbert, South Florida, and recruit a guy like that. Kind of been overshadowed, all the talk to Demir and Cook. Now he's a senior. What's, what's his ceiling, do you think, with, with Georgia? Uh, he, he, he can do everything. He can run inside of tackles, he can run outside of tackles. He's really good on the perimeter. Has really, really good hands. Uh, probably some of the best hands since DeAndre. Uh, he's good at running routes. Uh, he's a physical lift pick up on third down, so he's definitely a complete back. Uh, and he, he's learned a lot from James and Zamir, and it's also a good example of just like James and Samir was, of just staying the course, not being too anxious to enter the NFL or enter the transfer portal. Uh, just being patient, and uh, you know, hopefully all his hard work and his patience are going to pay off this year. Uh, I think the sky's the limit for him, and he's definitely going to be an integral part of our offense, and he'll be relied upon heavily. Uh, and he also adds value to our special teams, too, as a kick returner. And, he was a starter last year. Joe, when you came here in 2016, how many years did you figure you might be here? And 
what's it been like to see, you know, where you guys were when the, the staff came in then to, to yeah, well, I mentioned the solar panel, so that was part of it. Um, and then if you just think about it from, uh, you know, wins and losses going from the uh, Liberty Bowl to playing at the, uh, the pinnacle of uh, the national championship in 17 and then again this past year, you know, that's what you uh, have to do as a coach. Uh, I think you can also look at the fact that we only had one player drafted after that 2016 season, now you come to this year, we have 15. So just a testament of the, uh, the structure, uh, what Coach Smart demands out of, out of us as coaches and the recruiting philosophy, uh, the everyday details, and the standard that has to be uphill. And that has grown and uh, just create competitive depth where our guys are competing where they can't get complacent is a, is a pleasure, actually. Coach Vicky, we were watching during part of the uh, open period the other day your running backs take on uh, inside linebackers and pass protection. Can you tell us a little bit about some of those inside linebackers, considering you've had to replace three of them, and who's kind of giving your guys uh, some trouble, if you will? Yeah, uh, I think uh, all the linebackers are capable, uh, starting with uh, Pop, which I uh, know that's uh, Dumas. His name is Pop. He looked like an old man, so uh, call him Pop. <laughs> but uh, I think he's done a great job. Smile, Monday, who's coming off an uh, injury. I think he has a very, very uh, bright future and uh, will continue to develop. Um, Sorry, Xavier Sorry, uh, really, really fast linebacker that has great acceleration and you know has a has a great ceiling on top of him. Jalen Walker just got here as a mid-year. Uh, possesses a lot of pass rush ability and, and I think that's probably a better question for our defense guys but all those guys are, are a handful to pick up on blitzes uh, so I know Coach Schumann and Coach Muschamp going to do the best job to put them in position to make plays for our team. Uh, you know we're only in day seven so there's a lot of answers that will be uh, kind of told once we scrimmage on Saturday especially with our younger guys that really hadn't played and, or just got here and We'll see where we are from there after that scrimmage. Hey, Coach. Um, I mean, given your history with the city of Columbus, and you are talking earlier about your relationship with recruits and their families, and he's been talked about all offseason, hyped up. I was wondering, how long have you known about uh, defensive lineman Mike Williams, and how was that suspense watching his recruitment, and how did it feel finally being able to see him committed to Georgia? Uh, it was definitely tough. Uh, initially, when he committed to USC, uh, I've been knowing his, uh, his pops and his grandfather and his uncle for uh, a long time. Uh, so we knew we weren't never out of it. Um, so we just stayed the course, stayed consistent. Uh, and the product kind of speaks for itself. And uh, Michael's a Georgia kid that you know loves Georgia. I think he's going to uh, do things in an exceptional manner, which he has already. Uh, you can see the extra work and the attention to detail that he has as a, as a young player. He actually came in and practiced with our team uh, during the bowl uh, week for a couple of days. And, uh, you know, he went through 15, 14 spring practices in the spring game. But but even this summer, even days, you would see on off days, he would be working. He was working on a Sunday uh, doing extra things to, to make himself a better football player. So you're getting a very, very hard worker kind of unmatched from a hard work uh, standpoint. And that's what you want out of a young player so they can kind of influence their class as well as the older guys that, hey, this is the this is a standard. Look at what Michael's doing. Thanks. Let's take two more questions. Dale, kind of going off of that, uh, you guys have gotten talent out of Columbus, Phoenix City, continue recruiting that area. Just as a, a coach that spent so much time down there, just what does that mean to you to see that area continuing to thrive just in high school football and, and the talent that comes out of there? Yeah, there's a lot of talent in that area, kind of Columbus and Phoenix City. Uh, Phoenix City of late have, has been really excelling uh, on the football field, so you have a lot of kids kind of cross over the river a little bit. but. Um, it's just a great area. It's always, always have been, always will be. Uh, uh, me being from Columbus, I'm, I'm definitely tied into that area, and I'm in the know, and I kind of know some of the kids before uh, they even hit the high school, 
Marks that hey, this middle school kid I already know, know about. I heard about the little league running back, so <laughs> I kind of got a little bit of a head start on everybody else. So we're able to get those younger kids up to our camp and on campus, and we're able to kind of build that relationship with those kids. Hey, Dell. I know in the past we've asked you about you know potentially being a head coach one day. Seven years now, at Georgia. How do you feel like you've progressed? in that you know, desire to become a head coach should that opportunity one day present itself? Uh, like I said previously, I really don't control that part of the process. Uh, I'm just very, very happy to be the running back coach at Georgia. Uh, coach Smart has uh, been a blessing to me. Uh, I really want to thank him for affording me the opportunity to be the running back coach here. Also, the opportunities that he allows me to be in front of our, our football team and in front of our offensive uh, staff as well. I mean, Coach Smart has done everything as a mentor that you can do for as a head coach, assistant coach. And uh, he's very, very uh, positive when it comes to uh, his assistants moving on. Uh, we've had several assistants to move on to become head coaches. And uh, just being part of his uh, pedigree is very special to me. But my main job is being the best running back coach I can here. I feel like I'm a head coach every single day because I'm in charge of the running backs and special team areas that I'm in charge of. And I take all my jobs seriously, just like a head coach. Thank you. Sorry for the boys. Yelling. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, everybody can get up now. <laughs>